So now that we got all the components out of the pad pack, so we're going to go ahead and just start installing these back in the order we took them out. So first we'll start off with the polyurethane control spool seals. Inside that packet there's also a grease packet. What we want to do is just take those, put those inside the groove. Make sure you get those seated all the way. Same thing, glide rings. You want to take that, put those back inside the groove. Put in a new bushing. Take your pilot school assembly. You want to lubricate those O-rings pretty generously so they don't get cut when you put them back in. Give those a generous coating. And you go ahead and push those back in. In a twisting motion, you want to push and twist at the same time. So that nothing gets sheared, nothing gets cut. So once that's in, we go ahead and put on our new air chamber gaskets. Now these air chamber gaskets are designed so that they can be installed either way. It doesn't matter. There's no wrong way of putting them in. We already have our bushing in there. Then we simply take our air chamber and put our air chamber back on. This one I kept the bolts in there. And then go ahead and zap them down. Take your snap ring, your snap ring pliers. Now, you can see I have the pilot school assembly uh, popped up quite a bit. Take your snap ring, put the square cut facing up, put it onto the snap ring groove, make sure that it's in there properly and it spins freely. Once it's all the way in, push it all the way through, and you turn it over and repeat the same steps for the other side. So first we take our control spool seal, put that inside the board, take our glide ring, Put that inside the O-ring groove. And we take our bushing, put that inside of the inside of the board. Then we take our gasket, put our gasket back down, then our air chamber, and drop it right on top. We take your four bolts, drop them back in. You want to make sure you get all four bolts started before you start tightening them down. Now once that's in place, you take your snap ring and you put your snap ring on the opposite side here. Square cut up. Make sure you want to get it into that groove until it fully snaps so you can make sure that that snap ring moves freely in there. If the snap ring doesn't move freely, you didn't put it in right. Okay. Now we take our control spool, remove that O-ring from there. Keep your new control spool still. Grease those up, insert those in. Once you get the first side in, lubricate that, lubricate your seal, and when putting this in, you want to push, give it a push with a twisty motion. So you don't shear or cut that down and seal it. You can see that's fully in now. We get to this side, and we've got to put that last O-ring back onto this groove. So we get it started. So that O-ring is now fully into the groove. That's going to prevent it from going through. Then we can go ahead and put our air valve assembly back together. Using that same O-ring kit, go ahead and remove the other side. Usually these don't need to be replaced, but they're part of the air kit, so if you want to replace them, we give you the O-ring for them. We'll simply take off that O-ring. And replace it with the brand new one. Give it a nice loop. Go ahead and drop it back in.
back over, get your new control spool, your air valve spool. Then you want to lube up all these seals on your air valve spool. This is the only lubrication required when you're doing the rebuild, just so that they don't so they don't get uh, damaged when you're putting it in the first time. So once everything is looped, you go ahead and put it inside of the board. Just keep it a simple rocking motion back and forth and push it all the way through. There's a leading chamfer on it, and that chamfer will take that edge and bring it down and, and compress the seal for you. Once that goes all the way through, you do the same thing, replace that last O-ring. Take that one. Give it a good coating of lubrication. Put that back on. You want to get it in evenly so you make sure you don't uh, damage that opening. Sometimes that opening gets a little bit uh, hung up. You can just use the back side of your opening pit and compress that all the way in. Looking at the air valve, you can see Wilden reads straight up there. When you go to put this all back together, we already said that this was the top here because you can read Wilden the right way there. So when we put these all back together, we'll want to uh, put on the gaskets. Okay. So these also are the new gaskets that came in that kit. Now the gaskets have been designed to go on to where they only to be put on a certain way. So if you try to put it on backwards, you'll notice the holes won't line up, they won't go together. So the gaskets have to be put on a certain way. They don't go on that way, they don't go on that way. But once we get that all set up, that gasket only goes on one way, you can see that these line up to make it mistake proof so you can't put the gasket on backwards. So with that said, the air valve is the same way, everything's got to line up the same. We take that, we take the muffler plate gasket, also has to line up the same way. You try to put that on backwards, the holes will not line up. So once everything's properly aligned, go ahead and take your air valve, put that back on, and tighten it up. There we have it. The only thing left to do is torque the air chambers. 14 foot pounds of torque required on those. We repeat the same process on the other side. So that concludes the air distribution system rebuild kit on a XPS 820 or 830 pump.